You've asked for it, now I'm giving it to you. Decoy diagrams to make ducks land where you want them to. I'm Joel Strickland, and this is Surviving Duck Season. Thanks for watching. I appreciate the feedback that I get from y'all on the videos. And if you really enjoy what we're doing, please support us by picking up some of our merchandise that we have, uh, some t-shirts and hoodies. It's all on the website, survivingduckseason.com. Now, this is part two of my decoy masterclass. Uh, if you've missed the first video, you really should watch it first. Click the link right here. In that video, I talk about theory behind why we place decoys the way that we do. And when we talk about making ducks land where we want them to, I'm talking about manipulating the ducks. Uh, this is not so much about realism. It's about getting them to go where they may not necessarily go on their own. And when we talk about designing diagrams for you know, putting ducks in front of your spread, that's really what we're doing. I mean, you're gonna, you're gonna craft your decoy spread so that you have an opening, a hole for those ducks to go right to. Y'all have been asking me to, to show some diagrams, so I've created some graphics for you to see that. I'm gonna go over them, show you some different ways you can change them up based on wind and that sort of thing, but it's not every single scenario out there. I'm not trying to give you the blueprints of the perfect hunt. I'm trying to help you see some techniques that work and then you can adapt them based on the way you hunt, how many decoys you have, that sort of thing. I'm gonna be posting that on our website, survivingduckseason.com, so you can go back and reference those. You can download those pictures if that's what you wanna to do to have them for yourself. And I'll also put this video up there too, so you can do a quick reference. Uh, again, all of the stuff that's on my diagrams are not necessarily to, uh, to scale. It just is giving you kind of a general idea you can take and use however many decoys you want with a lot of these. Now, some of the larger spreads, it's really important that you probably do need to use five or six dozen decoys or more to get the effect. But there's a lot of these spreads that work perfectly well with three or four dozen decoys. We start off by considering the wind direction and where the blind is or where you're going to be hiding. The first type of hunting scenario that I'm gonna show you is hunting on a tree line. Uh, this is a very, very common way, you know, whether you are hunting, um, you know, in a big field or open water that has some kind of tree line or some kind of a bank type thing. This is probably one of the most common ways that I personally hunt and have hunted just about all my life. So here's my spread setup. You know, I've got um, a bunch of mallard decoys here. I've got some speckle bellies on the front side of that. Uh, it's mainly done before I'm kind of making a wall is really what I'm doing to stop the ducks that are coming from this direction. I'll typically put fewer ducks on this side. I'll have a big hole here and in the middle of the hole I'll put some teal decoys. Um, it seems like for the way that we hunt it works really well. You can not put any decoys there if you don't want to. You can put like one decoy in that. That that is something that a lot of guys do. It just kind of gives a focal spot and ducks will tend to want to land around them but I find that teal decoys especially work really well for that. Now I've also got some black duck decoys like I've talked about before. Um, you can really really see them from above. The ducks can. A lot of guys talk about using coot decoys and I think that those are oh that's the greatest confidence decoy there is. I don't think it has anything to do with the fact that they're coot. I don't believe that a duck can necessarily tell that those are coots, you know, until they get in there with them. I think what it is is just that they're black, and that's why the black duck decoys do basically the same thing. Guys for years have painted milk jugs and Coke bottles black and white and put them out for decoys. It's the same principle. So, again, it's a tree line. Um, blind is obviously right there. The wind is going to be blowing like this. Now you can notice the way that I've got the wind direction right here. It's actually slightly blowing in your face. Not really that much. It's just barely hitting you in the cheek. That is probably one of the most preferred ways that I like to hunt, especially if it's a tree line that's got like really, really high trees. And so you may ask, well, why would you want to do that? Well, I've got two reasons. Number one is when you have the wind that is slightly blowing at you, then you're going to create ripples on the water all the time. Uh, you don't have, if you've got the wind barely slightly blowing at your back or even straight along, you know, straight, you know, parallel to the tree line, a lot of times you don't get good wind close to, you know, close up to the bank, you know, or up to, you know, where your blind is, where it's really, really the most important. You don't want to have a ripple line start way out here and then go way further out into, 
you know, the area in front of you. You want to have ripples as close up to you as you can because you want to get those decoys close so that the ducks will work in close. So again, that's why I like the wind blowing that way. Another thing that happens, um, especially when you have real tall trees, you know, they're going to land into the wind, but what will happen is they'll hug that tree line when the wind is slightly blowing in your face. Ducks line up, come down the tree line. I want them to land. Really, this is the pocket right here. And, and so when they come across in front of the blind, this is about 15 yards is right here. This is all 15 yards. Uh, I rarely put any decoys out past 35 yards. Uh, occasionally, if I've got ducks that are working far, I'll put them out. I'll put some decoys, you know, real far out and just to kind of hold them in. And then maybe 30 yards might be the innermost uh, part of, of the spread. But typically, you know, this is going to be about 35 yards at the very, very most. Uh, a lot of times it's a lot closer than that because I, I want my shooting zone to be 1520 is what I like for it to be. I always like to arrange my spinners near cover. I've got the spinning wing decoys, the mojos on the top end, on the very far end, past all my decoys. Sometimes it works better if, they're, if you put the spinners right there where you want the ducks to land, especially the further north you hunt and the earlier in the season, you kind of want to put the spinning wing decoys right there where you want to kill the birds. But as we get later in the season, that's definitely what we don't want to do because normally they won't quite finish to the spinners. I also like to use a remote so I can turn them off when the ducks start getting close. Now what happens if the wind shifts and it's in your face? Uh, I, I've heard lots and lots of guys say over the years that you just never, never should hunt with the wind in your face. And I can tell you right now that's absolutely not true. It's not the most fun situation, especially if it's a cold wind. But there's been lots and lots and lots of days that I have duck hunted with the wind blowing in my face, 15, 20 miles an hour in my face, and we shoot ducks right in front of us. I'll give you an, another scenario. Basically, this is a similar setup at the same location, and, and the wind is blowing at, in the face. It's either slight at an angle, or it could even be blowing straight at your face. How do you set the decoys up? Well, the ducks are definitely going to circle around behind you in this situation, and they're going to be coming in like this. They're going to be coming right over the top of the blind, or they're going to be coming in from the side, like because of the way that the the wind is blowing that's what we got again I've got my teal right here they're slightly closer to the blind than I would normally put them um, and then I have some decoys right here again these are very very close to the edge then you know these are like maybe 10 yards away from the edge of the uh, of the tree line but then out here I've made my my wall so to speak and so I've got all these decoys here that when the ducks are pitching over our heads and go to land they're going to see these decoys pretty quickly and then they're going to land in between here and here. Mallards work a lot more predictably than a lot of other species of ducks. Um, but with mallards, a lot of times we'll have them pitching over our heads and they get over here and you, you know they're going to be trying to land into the wind. So they're going to be landing away from you. You could just shoot them right over the top. But a lot of times what we'll do is right when they get over the top of these teal decoys, you can bark at them real hard and they will literally turn around and face you and then you can shoot them in the face like that. The way the wind is blowing today, the ducks are setting up over these trees and coming in. Well, they're not going to land right here because they don't have enough room to land right here. They're going to land out here. But what will happen is if they pass over this, they'll key in on it, but just enough to grab their attention and then they'll move on and land past it. So that's one strategy I like to use. Another really common scenario for a lot of people, uh, if you hunt in layout blinds, if you hunt in pit blinds, if you hunt in a big wide open area where you have a clump of bushes or something like that that you hunt in and you're kind of out in the wide open, this is a, a blind where you could use a lot of decoys. And so I don't know, there's probably maybe I don't know, eight or nine dozen decoys out there, including some speckle bellies on the front end. And the way that I've got this arranged, it's a, it's a very common spread configuration that works really well. It also would work in a tree line. Um, I've got this tail that kind of runs very, very close to the blind. Again, the wind is going to be crossing, so it's going to be running right down the blind. So the ducks would be landing coming in from this direction. So what I do is I run the tail way out here like this, put my teal decoys kind of in this pocket right here, and then this is kind of the wall. And I've got like a little hook right here. So what happens is the ducks, you know, will be coming, you know, down this way, and they're going to be kind of forced into the pocket. 
Again, there are some guys that don't like to use, you know, the, the, the target decoys. I like to call them target decoys. Uh, teal, you know, put them there. Sometimes people might put maybe one or two, you know, single decoys in the middle. Uh, again, I've got black ducks and mallards. Sometimes I use uh, pintail decoys. Normally when I do use pintail decoys or decoys that have a lot of white on them, they're going to be up here in this part of the spread. That way the white is attracting to the ducks from down here rather than having up this way. I sprinkle my black duck decoys throughout the entire spread because you'd be amazed how well the ducks can see it from a long way away. They can see that, see the shape of that spread just like the way that I've got those right like that. Now, I'll give you guys a couple of variations of this exact same uh, scenario, except the wind might be a little different, so let me show you. All right, now, what happens when you have the wind a little bit more at your back? Again, I don't typically like to hunt this way, but occasionally, you know, like I say, the wind changes on you. Um, you've got a lot of decoys out. It's hard to kind of make a big change and move somewhere else in the middle of your hunt. Um, some guys, you know, you might only have one or two blinds, you know, you're forced to, I'm only going to get to hunt there, so I'm going to have to make it work. So, what would you do? You know, again, I, I had the teal decoys here, I move them just a little bit closer into the pocket. They're going to be kind of hitting more of an angle, so I want to give them more area to land in here, is where I want. Uh, now, if the wind gets more and more at your back, that's when I would be taking some of these decoys and move, moving them a little bit more over here so you can open this up a little bit so that they don't stop short and land out here. You don't want that, so you might bring these little decoys and put them out here to where you kind of open that up. The whole idea is it's, it's just you're sucking them in. You're manipulating those ducks to come into the pocket. Kind of a more open water type of hunting. Uh, the wind might be slightly off your left shoulder, maybe a little bit to the back of you, um, and you kind of have a blind maybe on a point. It's a really good way to hunt. And so what happens is, you know, if you, you have the blind or you're just hiding or whatever kind of off the point, you, you have an opportunity where you can put some decoys straight out in front of you and then have a wall. Your wall is over here, okay? That's what I call the wall, the head of your decoy spread. It's the most upwind side. So I've got some geese decoys up here. I've got some mallards and some black ducks right here and that creates the wall. I'm hoping that the ducks are not going to bypass that. I want them to stop short of it and land somewhere in here, key in on the teal decoys or land right here. If they're flying across, that means I'm going to get a nice crossing shot. Now I have some decoys here. This is kind of a kind of typical. You got this little pocket that will be on the other side of the point. And so what I do then is I put a few decoys back here and uh, that way that the ducks don't land right there and that kind of forces them to be more in front of the blind. Okay, again, remember you can change all this up as the wind you know changes, but it's just, it's the theory and the principle of what you're doing. You're creating a block to keep the ducks from going past your decoys. Um, another thing you can do is make a little tail out this way. I do that sometimes too, is you know, tail a few decoys. And what that does is it causes them to hook right into the spread. All right, here's another similar type of scenario. The wind is kind of in your face a little bit, but what you do is you you line, you know, you make a line basically in line with the blind, and you put some decoys over here just to the right of your blind. The ducks are going to work right up here like this, and again, this is a wall. As you can see, there's not a lot of decoys in the spread. I've said this on several of my videos before. I throw a few decoys over here and a few decoys over here, and you know, a couple teal in the middle and that's all I do. I'm not really focused on so much of a of a diagram or something like that. And this is kind of what I'm talking about. You know, a few show, throw a few over here, a few over there, some teal in the middle, and then work them in. You can take this and pivot it any direction you want to based on the wind. And, you know, if you've got wind coming from back this way, if you've got wind coming from this way, you just flip everything around and then that will work for you. You know, you're, you're just trying to get them to line up on something, and here's the end. That's the wall. That's the end. There, there's no more runway past that, is that's what you want to make them think. You know, remember, we're talking about ducks that their brain is a little bitty, like the size of a pea. They can't reason. You know, their depth perception is a little different than what we see. Their eyes on the side of their heads instead of in front, so they don't see things the same way we do. That's why you can manipulate them the way that you put your decoys out.
Okay, here's a flooded timber setup. So in flooded timber, we have a hole that is easily you can shoot across most of the time. You know, they might be like 30 yards wide. A lot of times they're even smaller than that. Some of our holes may be longer. The wind is blowing like this, which means the ducks are gonna be coming like this. So the, the top end of the hole, basically the downwind side of the hole that the ducks are gonna pass over first, that's where I stack all my decoys. I put them on that end. And it's really, a lot of them are not really even in the hole, okay? I don't want to, to miss, people to misunderstand. Don't clutter up your hole with putting all the decoys. I see a lot of guys, they'll fill up their hole with decoys, I don't put the decoys where I want the ducks to land. I want to put them, you know, further back so they pass over the top of them. And then I'll put usually just a couple of decoys in the middle of where I want them to land. And uh, typically we'll have like a jerk cord that's tied to these decoys. And then we'll run the jerk cord out into the, you know, to the other end of the, of the hole where we can be jerking the cord and then making ripples on the water. Of course, we do a lot of kicking and splashing because really there's virtually no wind on the water when you're hunting in flooded timber, uh, at least the kind of flooded timber that we have in Arkansas. They're typically gonna pass over the top of these decoys and then parachute down is what happens in the timber. They're coming to the call. That's the big difference in a lot of the way that we hunt in timber. Um, I've hunted a lot of days in flooded timber with no decoys at all. They're coming to the call. Now, as far as the spinning wing decoys, how do you hunt with those in flooded timber? Well, used to, we would put it right there. And early in the morning, it works very well to do that. But as it starts getting a little bit more light, they tend to work better if you put the, the spinners back here, okay? But sometimes it doesn't work well, you know? And you could put it behind a tree. So say they're coming this way. If you put that spinner right here, once they start coming in, they don't see it anymore. When they're working, they see it. But they're seeing it because they're passing by trees that get in the way. It's really the perfect scenario for using spinning wing decoys is a lot of heavy cover. Um, but we'll put them back up here. Occasionally, we've put them back even back here behind where we're hunting because the ducks will line up and then they'll just keep coming to the, to the, to the decoy behind us. And so if we're hiding on these trees here, for example, you know, a lot of times they'll just, they'll, they'll get in low, they'll fly all the way through and try to land on the spinner back there. You just have to keep messing with things. You have to keep moving things around. If something's not working, turn off the spinner, move the spinner to another spot. Don't be afraid to try different things. So now that you know how to place your decoys, the next part is calling. Watch this video right here. It's the next one in this series and find out what to call, when to call, and how much to call. God bless. I'm Joel Strickland and I'll see you on the next video.